we are given f prime of x is greater than or equal to three and less than or equal to five for all values of x. What are the minimum and maximum possible values of f of eight minus f of two? Notice how this difference would be the change in y. The derivative function value indicates the instantaneous rate of change of the function at a particular value of x. So hopefully it makes sense that the minimum possible value of f of eight minus f of two would occur when the derivative function value is the least possible derivative function value of three, and the maximum possible value of f of eight minus f of two would occur when the derivative function value is the greatest possible derivative function value of five. So let's begin by determining the minimum possible value of f of eight minus f of two, and assume that f prime of x is equal to three for all values of x. Well, this means the slope of the tangent line would always be three for all the values of x, and therefore the graph of f of x would also have to be a line with a slope of three. So if we have a line with a slope of three, remember the slope is equal to the change in y divided by the change in x, which in this case would be three over one, which indicates that y, or the function value, increases by three each time x increases by one. But notice in our case, delta x is equal to the change in x, which in this case should be eight minus two, which is equal to six. So going back to the slope of three over one, if x increases by six, we would multiply the numerator and denominator by six to get an equivalent slope that will give us the change in y, the change in the function value, when x increases by six. Notice how this gives us the equivalent slope of 18 divided by six, which again indicates that y, or the function value, increases by 18 each time x increases by six. So now we know the minimum possible value of f of eight minus f of two would be 18. And to demonstrate this graphically, let's assume that f of two is equal to four. I could have picked any function value, I just picked four, but this does indicate that the graph of f of x contains the point two comma four, this point here. And then from this point, if we know y increases by 18 each time x increases by six, if this is the point two comma four, if x increases by six, the x coordinate is going to be eight, and if y increases by 18, four plus 18 is 22, the graph would also have to contain the point eight comma 22, which is this point here. And again, if f prime of x is equal to three for all values of x, not only is the slope of the tangent line always three, the graph of the function f of x would also have to be a line with a slope of three and pass through these two points, and therefore f of x would look like this. And by analyzing the graph, notice how the change in x from two to eight is six, and the change in y, which is the same as the change in the function value, is 22 minus four, which is 18. And delta y, in this case, is f of eight minus f of two. And now we'll go through a similar process to determine the maximum possible value of f of eight minus f of two by assuming now f prime of x equals five. So if f prime of x is equal to five for all values of x, then the slope of the tangent line is always five, and the graph of f of x would also have to be a line with a slope of five. So again, the slope is equal to the change in y divided by the change in x, which in this case is now five divided by one, and if delta x is equal to six, once again we multiply the numerator and denominator of the slope by six, which gives us an equivalent slope of 30 divided by six. And again, delta y is the change in y, the change in the function value, which in this case would be f of eight minus f of two, and therefore the maximum possible value of f of eight minus f of two is 30. And again, to demonstrate this on the coordinate plane, let's clear our previous work except for the initial point. And now we know when the change in x is six, the change in y, or the function value is 30. So if we add six to the x-coordinate, we have an x-coordinate of eight. And if we add 30 to the y-coordinate of four, we have a y-coordinate of 34, giving us the point 834, which is this point here. 
And again, the important thing to notice here is if the derivative function value is always phi for all values of x, then the graph of f of x would also have to be a line with a slope of five and pass through these two points. Where again, from these two points, notice how the change in x, or delta x is equal to six, and the change in y is 34 minus four or 30. And delta y, the change in y is f of eight minus f of two. I hope you found this helpful.